in medical school, we take an oath called the Hippocratic Oath. Uh, in one of the lines, it states, first, we first do no harm. Um, and, and I take that very seriously. Again, I deal with some of the most complex rare disease cases you can imagine, and it is always the foremost thing in my mind, safety. So first thing we do with every patient is we run the same molecular markers on every single patient. We do that because we have a singular disease entity that we're studying here, and we want to actually equivocate that data across one platform. This is an example of a milk allergy patient where we are now studying the different types of proteins present in milk, 23 primary subset proteins in milk. How are we going to actually organize those in an appropriate process? Medication if necessary. Uh, if we're gonna use sublingual immunotherapies, how do we do that? And look at that number at the bottom there, 1.5 times 10 to the 140th combinations possible based on what type of data we're working on. So these are very dense, these are very complex. This is then followed by another physician validation checkpoint at which time the patient has actually gone into a conditioning regimen. We're actually now starting to dose these patients. We're challenging them, they're giving uh, daily and then eventually doses that turn into a physical challenge. That all has to be calculated. It's adjusted based on several factors. Uh, then they go into actual treatment foods. These are typically the tolerance foods, the tolerance induction foods, the foods that you consider most severe. In this case, it'd be milk. That's also a chronometric aspect, meaning it involves time. So we actually have to measure the timing effect. And this is why we collect so much data, not only at the beginning of the process, but at the uh, duration of the process as well. And finally, there is what is the TIP process itself, where we can take kids who have peanut allergies, egg allergies, milk allergies, shellfish allergies, you name it, and we use the same data approach to pick a chronometric aspect to this, set it up against vectors to know how a system is gonna drop over time, then they come in and we can actually challenge them appropriately. With that, we have extremely uh, successful numbers in addition to very low side effect profile numbers. This is then goes into the final phase of repeating their biomarkers, meaning they finish their initial phase of treatment, we want to see that their numbers have actually have improved, meaning we don't just base tolerance on a clinical approach. We want to know at a molecular level that the patient's actually improved. This is also a physician validation checkpoint. Once this is done, we go into the final sequence, which is pure remission, which means now we can take these daily doses of food and move them to a weekly dose, maybe move them to an every two week dose. How many safety steps are in place? How was it built this way? Okay, yeah, sure, I'm a little crazy. I've liked mathematics a lot. Maybe that's what it is. But the bottom line is we have to have all these steps in place to make this actually happen to the safety parameters that we have. So we have spent well over a million and a half dollars over time collecting data, turning that data into algorithms, actually creating appropriate mathematical models, applied mathematical models, now turning it into machine models or machine learning models. So all of this which was done through massive data processes and a lot of human hands uh, going through a process has been built into software. So what you're about to see here is kind of how we do this process. You know, software when it's all said and done just looks like a screen. So here's an example of what that screen would look like. And we'll start this video. This is uh, pulling a patient's data, again, 400 markers directly from a single file. The file's pulled up. We pull up that file. It's uploaded, it takes less than a second. The data is then uploaded and the machine does its analysis. The machine will then endotype and create a snapshot of the patient's risk factors within under a second. That type of work is something we've been working on for really the last number of years, but imagine that. If we can do this this quickly now, we can now scale this at the level that's needed for millions of patients that are there. I can't tell you how much effort has gone into building this, and this is just the first phase of it. We are about 40 to 50% in, but this is just one example of what we are doing. This is how safety is built.